here in 5 and we're going to be looking at Mei today. Specifically the freeze mechanic that comes with our primary fire and the speed debuff it applies. I feel like the game itself doesn't do a very good job of explaining how this works, but you can find out pretty quickly by checking the wiki that it takes 30 ammo to freeze a target. This doesn't directly translate to 30 mouse clicks because each click of the mouse seems to spit out multiple rounds, and holding M1 down, the 20 rounds per second fire rate of May's gun means that we should be able to freeze a target in 1.5 seconds consistently. Intermittently spraying a target so long as we do it frequently enough still freezes the target in 30 rounds though. I don't have a great idea of what the allowed downtime is, but freeze progress is lost all at once rather than little by little. I like to think of this as filling a bucket to a fill line before it gets emptied rather than trying to fill a bucket that's got a hole in it. And I'm going to be using the visual freeze and unfrozen indicators to talk about how the speed debuff applies because they are directly linked and it's a lot easier than constantly showing you a workshop speedometer. Now you might think that since I've said the speed debuff and the rate of being frozen are directly linked, that each unit of May ammo is going to slow the target the same amount. And this is kind of true, it's true for the second ammo round through to the 29th ammo round. Those all apply a 2.5% speed debuff, but the last round doesn't slow the target at all, and the very first round slows the target to 70% of their normal speed straight away. And as you might imagine, that's what I've got a problem with, because May's speed debuff being front heavy like this makes her pretty much inescapable as an accelerating character like Wrecking Ball. Now I'm just going to show you me playing in a lobby where I've set the movement speed to be 70% all the time. You can see I'm rolling around at 7 meters per second compared to the usual 10, and when I grapple, my speed limit instead of going to 20 meters a second is going to go to 14, just under that which would let me fireball. The 30% movement penalty I can apply with one tick of May ammo is going to stop a fireballing wrecking ball. This admittedly isn't that far away from just a Sombra that holds right click on a team as you roll through them, it was just the best example I could think of to show you how front heavy the speed de debuff is. I've not really heard anyone complain about being pre-fired by a Mei and that breaking their fireball for them on the approach, but I see ball players struggling to get away from Mei all the time. This is a clip that got posted to Reddit a month ago of a ball getting frozen multiple times, and the comments are full of people criticising this grapple use saying he should have played it better and he could have gotten away with a better grapple. Now I don't think this play was perfect by the ball, but it's definitely a good attempt at trying to get away that would work in any other circumstance. He went for a short grapple to get fireball quickly, hoping that he could ride the fireball away to safety. The problem is, as soon as your movement speed debuff exceeds 16% with Hammond, you can't retain fireball after grappling, at least not on flat ground. Of course the cutoff had to be somewhere, but it's difficult to differentiate between a speed that's not going to let you fireball away and a speed that gets you to safety. This ball does the right thing and waits until after he's been frozen once to use his grapple, but you and I know that the 30% speed penalty from one May ammo is enough to prevent him getting fireball at all, so he gets stuck here. Now you might be thinking that surely there's some kind of immunity period to being frozen. There must be some kind of window of opportunity here that the ball missed that he could have taken. So I tried looking for that as best I could. Going back to the idea that the freeze progress and the speed debuff are tied together, I recorded myself freezing a Roadhog with an inflated health pool with a thousand ammo. We know it takes one and a half seconds to freeze someone if we just hold them one down, and the wiki tells me someone stays frozen for one and a half seconds as well, so that would be 60 ammo used across those three seconds. Now I honestly really thought this was a thing, and maybe there are better ways to test for it, but I recorded this twice and you can go and watch those videos, I've, I've put the links to them in the description. And in both takes I froze the Roadhog 17 times, and in one case I had 20 ammo left after the final freeze, and in the other I had 22 ammo left after the final freeze. We're going to run with the 20 ammo left example because it's easier to work with, and I'm not interested in the 17th freeze because I'm not able to measure the downtime after it. We're interested in the freeze frozen immune cycle that happened 16 times with 950 ammo. What's awkward about that is it actually divides to a number below 60, and it took me a while to sort of click with why this was. I don't think it's because May isn't working as intended. I think this is happening because someone gets frozen as the 30th round of ammo hits them. So the 1.5 second timer for which they're going to be frozen for starts before the first 1.5 time to freeze timer ends. If an immunity period does exist, it's such a short period of time that I think anyone's going to struggle to do anything meaningful 
which left me wondering why so many people, including myself, thought this was a thing to begin with. And I think this all comes down to acceleration in the game and how quickly most characters reach their top speed. We see this from top end DPS players all the time, they're mashing their strafe keys and they're going from 100% top speed in the left direction to 100% top speed in the right direction, to going back in the left direction again, all with very little downtime between these transitions in opposite directions. When hit by a May projectile that slows you, you don't feel a sudden jolt as the game puts you at the new limit of your speed, instead you decelerate to it, but not nearly as fast as you accelerate to your top speed as almost any character in the game except for Wrecking Ball. I think this is why even though we've just sort of checked and found that there's no immunity period to being frozen, I can still hit a 6 meters per second readout on my speedometer as Genji when I become unfrozen and hold W. The speed debuff feels more like a speed limit where I'm being brought down to this top speed that's 70% of my normal speed and then as more projectiles hit me I'm being slowed and slowed and frozen again. As the ball after being unfrozen you don't even get to see 70% of your normal speed because by the time you're accelerating to what was supposed to be your new speed cap you've already been hit by more projectiles and slowed to a freeze again where other heroes immediately accelerate to their top speed and then are brought down by the 30% debuff over time, Ball's rate of acceleration itself is being slowed and slowed. Where other tanks have escape cooldowns that give them huge bursts of speed immediately and aren't affected by this slow, Ball is locked out of his fireball ability and can even have his grapple taken away by a freeze. It just feels like a tank balanced around the idea of having an escape cooldown available is being locked out of that. This is such a rough matchup for Ball, but I'm not going to make a video this long without giving you some suggestions as to what you can do. I really recommend booting up your own custom lobby just by yourself and set that movement speed to 70%, which is that first tick speed debuff that you're going to be getting from May. And it really feels the same to me, and it is pretty miserable, but as you sort of grapple around and get a feel for it, you're going to notice that the best way to cover long distances is to just keep your grapple active. You want a really long grapple, that goes dead ahead in the direction that you want to go in, preferably downhill if possible, and that's how you get as far away as possible with this sort of movement speed debuff. As soon as your grapple stops being active, the game's going to want to put you back at 7 meters a second, and a trick you can do to try and counteract that if you've sort of you've gone for this long grapple, you've already covered some distance you want to get further, you can start trying to b-hop, and that's going to be where you just hit spacebar, your jump command, in the same frame you're touching the ground, and that's going to help you conserve that higher speed from when you had your grapple active. If you're going to be going for that, I recommend binding a jump command to mouse wheel down. I personally have mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down bound to jump, and I'll make a video about b hopping in general. But the one thing you mustn't do if you're going for this kind of thing is jump towards your grapple point, because you're going to meet this kind of weird resistance in the air. You've got to stay on the ground while your grapple's active, and then once you've released grapple, that's when you can start going for these jumps to keep your speed up. Anyway, that's going to do it for me, and I hope this video is helpful or told you something you didn't know about me. And I'll be back with more videos about balls soon.